Hello folks, and welcome back to the Geodynamics video lectures on climatic, geomorphic, and geodynamic processes. Here in lecture number three, we're going to talk about orogenic wedges. And our goal for the lecture is basically to introduce what an orogenic wedge is, and then talk about how they're useful for studying mountain systems. Now, as we've already seen, when we can look at two plates colliding in the formation of a mountain range or mountain system in the zone where the two plates are colliding, we talk about plate convergence, the two plates converging with one another, detachment of the mantle lithosphere, so often the continental mantle lithosphere will be subducted, um, and there's a possibility that preceding collision we had oceanic mantle lithosphere that was subducted, and with that subduction of the mantle part of the lithosphere, we're left then with crustal thickening that occurs because we have two crusts that are basically mushing into one another. Now, the idea of an orogenic wedge is something of a simplification of what's happening when we form real mountain systems. Um, the idea is that on the sides of this mountain system, we have these regions of wedge-shaped uh, geometry and the thought is that when they're growing, they grow in a way such that they basically try to maintain a stable geometry. So in the case that we're looking at here, we're looking at a model of, uh, kind of cartoon model of continental crust coming in from the left side and colliding with another continental crust on the right. If you want to see where the orogenic wedges are, what we're talking about is basically these wedge-shaped things here and here. So there's two in this case that are back to back. The one top surface of the wedge is formed by the topography at the Earth's surface and the bottom surface of the wedge is formed by the thrust faults that underlie the mountain system where it is growing. Now as we can easily see here when we're adding continually continental crustal mass into the origin it's going to be changing the stress state within these wedges and that's what's going to cause the mountain system to grow. Basically, you can see this continental crust piece coming in here and think about that as a continual addition of mass into this origin. And as you add the mass, the wedge will grow, but it will grow in a way that maintains its geometry. So it just basically maintains the same shape, but gets bigger. If we want to look at a natural example, one of the better places to go to look at this would be the island of Taiwan. And in this case, we're looking at the Philippine Sea Plate coming in um, here to the northwest and colliding with the Eurasian Plate. And the island of Taiwan is kind of outlined here and it's shown in this kind of, I don't know, brownish um, color. Now, we have kind of a complex subduction setting here and we don't really need to worry about the details of that. The main thing is here, if you look on the island of Taiwan, you see a series of thrust faults, and the thrust faults are basically running parallel to one another or close to parallel to one another along the length of the island. So if we look at a cross section through here, um, and just to go back for a second, you can see here the orange line is the location of the cross section. If we look at the cross section, we see a structural geometry that looks something like this. So over here is the Philippine Sea Plate coming in. Here's the um, Eurasian Continental um, plate and so these two are colliding and things look a little bit complicated in terms of the picture of what's happening in the details of the interior of the origin but basically what we're looking at is a pair of orogenic wedges that are back to back and so why don't you take a moment pause the video and see if you could pick out where you think the orogenic wedges are before we continue all right, let's find out if you found the right location for the orogenic wedges. You should have hopefully found something that looks generally like this, and you say, well, you know, in the details, this doesn't quite look exactly like a wedge, and you're right. Some of these faults are listric and have a little bit more complicated geometry in this particular cross section, but you can see clearly something over on the Philippine seat plate side that looks quite like a wedge, and generally speaking, something that looks like a wedge over on the European or Eurasian plate side of things. So we have here our nice example of two orogenic wedges back to back. Now the idea for how these wedges grow and the reason that they uh, form this particular geometry is that when you form this wedge, you basically build up the wedge 
by plastic failure, by brittle deformation within the interior of the wedge, and it forms a geometry that's basically stable, but it's always very close to the critical stress state, meaning that any small change to the geometry of the wedge is going to cause a fault to form, to deform, or something um, to try to restore the wedge back to its kind of favored geometry, which is a function really of the, the rock properties of the wedge itself. So if you modify things like the topography by erosion, if you take a chunk out of this geometry of the wedge by uh, very focused erosion, what's going to happen is that you should expect to see faults that begin to be activated within the interior of the wedge to try to build the topography back up to the stable wedge shape. Now here is the kind of model picture that we're looking at where we have these different processes that are acting on this wedge. We have uh, erosion or denudation at the Earth's surface. We have climate. There's rainfall here, sedimentation that's taking place. And then if we were to go out and study these things in the real world, we have a series of things that we could possibly observe to understand whether or not one of these models uh, is appropriate for an origin. So we can look at things like the stratigraphy of the Foreland Basin. We can look at the seismic properties, the crustal structure, and the types of metamorphic rocks that have been exhumed to the Earth's surface. And all of these observations will let us basically test whether this idea of orogenic wedges is something that is, um, is reasonable. And uh, we won't look at the details in this case. We won't look at some of these observations um, in any great detail. But we can say that for certain types of mountain systems, it seems that this orogenic wedge model is quite a reasonable way, uh, a, a very simple but reasonable way of understanding the mountain system at the scale of the crust of the Earth. So that's it for this video lecture on orogenic wedges. It's time to take the quiz, and when you come back, we'll start talking about numerical models of these systems of tectonic, erosional, and climate interactions, and uh, some of our basic predictions that we expect from numerical modeling of this complex system.